So, and again, you know, we've been kind of dancing around this for, you know, the, the last 45, 50 minutes or so, we've been discussing kind of the, the Maccabean revolt and their relationship between themselves and the Seleucids. What, what triggers the revolt? Is, is there a, a, an event or is there several events? What, what happens that starts this uh, independence revolt for Jerusalem? I think the, the Maccabean revolt is fascinating because it's on the one hand straightforward and again not, right? And so on the one hand, I think we already talked about very briefly that there are these, these movements of presumably elite Judeans who feel in the 170s that, you know, siding with our new overlords, adapting Greek cultural elements, importing some of that nice wine, uh, is a nice thing. And there seemed to be a clear movement towards that. And I think there is already some sort of resistance to that. But it's some scholars have argued that it's a resistance between the city, who is very Greek-leaning, and the countryside, which is very conservative. I don't think we have any evidence for that. I think that makes that makes no very little sense, actually. But it clearly is there is the le Judean leadership in the 170s seems to be thinking that this is the way the journey is going. And then there are clearly those who don't. The, the Maccabees, in their story, they're coming out as these, you know, priestly family from the countryside. And they're clearly not um, this priestly family from the countryside, but this is the origin story that is ascribed to them in the book of the Maccabees. So they're clearly, there are some groups like the Maccabees and surely other groups that are not happy with these directions. I would argue that in the 170s, the majority of the political elite is going with this Greek cultural adaptation. Um, and and but, just to be, just to quickly interject it and provide some of the context here. So the, the story that we're told, it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's a gentleman by the name of Modin Matthias and his sons, they... Uh, murder the governor Bacchides, who's do you know oppressing the religious, religiously persecuting the the Jewish people, and he goes into the countryside to hide from the army, and this triggers kind of a popular revolt. This is the the rough story that we're told. Am, am I this correct? This is the rough. This is the rough story that we're told. Now the question is. It's a chicken and egg question, what comes first, right? Yeah. Uh, we know that at some point it seems to be that Antiochus IV on his withdrawal from Egypt, from an Egyptian campaign, also comes into Jerusalem and desecrates the sanctuary and the temple. Um, the question is really, are there these brewing discontent movements and and what is the origin of that is what what starts first is it first the revolt is it first the king who plunders the treasury um uh, and that leads to the revolt and i think we ultimately we, we cannot tell um but it's a combination of clearly a very volatile situation if you want to think about popular culture you can think about andor here right yeah um <laughs> that it's a volatile situation in which some parts of the community feel one way other parts of the community feel clearly feel another way. Modi'in, are the Maccabees from Modi'in or not? We don't know that. Um, that's how they're presented, right? Um, I would be highly surprised if they're these complete outsiders. That's how the Book of Maccabees wants us to present this. But exactly, and then it comes to, eventually the revolt comes. And there's several groups. They're the so-called Hasidim. They're the, 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 the Maccabees and, and clearly others. And that begins, is the beginning of the revolt. The revolt takes its center of the desecration of the sanctuary, right? And that allegedly uh, the Seleucid king sacrificed pork on the altar, destroyed the altar. And, and then we're told by Josephus that the people in Jamaria, Samaria actually rededicated this, the, 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 the sanctuary to Zeus. Um, Ooh, <laughs> that's a bad, that happened, bad move. Did not happen is, yeah. is a difficult situation to describe. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the sanctuary was forbidden to perform sacrifices, and clearly that enraged large parts of the Judean population, and that led to the revolt. The, the end of the revolt uh, uh, is celebrated at 164 when, when the sanctuary is rededicated, right? Our, uh, not our, but the, the modern-day Jewish celebration of Hanukkah is this celebration of life, right? The rededication of the temple after the Seleucid sack. 
uh, it's not a major Jewish holiday, but it's a, it's, it's a holiday we celebrate every year. Right. Yeah. Um, and with that, the sanctuary is rededicated. Now in 160, after famous battle, allegedly the revolt is over, but it is also important. We already mentioned that very briefly that, that the Maccabees are not yet in charge. They're clearly one of the strongest, if not the strongest power holder in the region. But they're not yet, they're not yet high priests. They're not yet in charge. The high priest and the group around the high priest, um, I think Book of Maccabees and Josephus describe it as those that had hidden themselves in the Accra, in the fortress. Mm -hmm. um, there's a fortress in Jerusalem somewhere. And within that fortress, there are those who have hidden themselves in the fortress. But it also tells us that the Maccabees, yes, they're telling us they're in charge and they rededicated the sanctuary, but they're not yet at the center of the political power. And from 160 to 153, so for at least seven years, 64 to 63, right? Seven, 10 years, that group that the Maccabees likes to talk about as this, this, this one small group, they're still the one who are technically in charge of the city. Uh, they're still in charge of the relationship with the Seleucid state. Um, and it's only in 153, which we talked about very briefly, when Jonathan gets granted the high priesthood, that the Judeans actually, uh, that the Maccabees get officially being put in the center of the Judean state. Um, yeah, sorry, that you asked me about the triggers and now we ran through it all. <laughs> oh no, that this is fantastic. I, you know, it's clear you you love and enjoy what you're talking about. So it's it's fantastic just to hear somebody who enjoys it talking about it because I, I'm getting excited about it as you're talking about it. 